40 victories in six years. And we are set for action. The officials tonight, Kelly Self, Urban Wilson, and Steve Honecky. Rupert and Brody jump center. Brody wins the tap, and the Bulldogs will control it first. Uh, Darnell Brody, a guy coming off a game where didn't get into double figures. He's been so solid this year. This is a game where they're going to need scoring from 51 and white. He flips it to Tucker DeVries. DeVries with a skip pass. Bulldogs moving quickly to the corner where the left-hander, Kevin Overton, fires. And the rebound is run down by Clarence Rupert. He's the leading rebounder for the Salukis, averaging more than six a game. And uh, you see the defense right now. Looks like Drake coming out almost in a triangle and two looks. So we talked about Connor Enright missing this basketball game. No Enright, no Colby Garland. Drake mixing up the defense. And Troy D'Amico knocks down his 31st three of the year to get the Salukis on the board first. And by the way, no Connor is watching tonight, and we wish him a speedy recovery. At the high post, it's Darnell Brody. DeVries trying to get free, but he gets wrapped up by A.J. Ferguson. And you see just the aggressiveness on the defensive end from Southern Illinois. Uses their body, used the body very, very well, not allowing anything easy. But Troy D'Amico is a guy that can really make big, a big difference for this Saluki offense. Not only is he a willing shot maker, also a guy that can put it on the floor and facilitate. Southern Illinois mostly man-to-man -man on defense all season long. DeVries picks up his dribble. The shot clock goes down to seven. Atten Wright wants to attack. Tough defense by Johnson, who's an outstanding defender. With two on the shot clock, Atten Wright puts it up and in. Atten Wright, a guy that can isolate on an island. Good in the mid-range, can get all the way to the rim. But you mentioned it, Larry. Xavier Johnson, all defensive team in the league a year ago. And... Quite a scorer this year, which means he doesn't quite draw the top assignment every night on the defensive end. Still pretty good on that end. Such an amazing story. Last year, averaged seven points a game, and he was the leading returning scorer for Southern Illinois. And now he's second in the country at more than 23. D'Amico drives the lane, picks up a foul against Darnell Brody. And Brody, who got into early foul trouble on Saturday against Indiana State, picks up one early. And another really smart play by Troy D'Amico. Saw him knock down the shot early. This time doesn't settle. Gets all the way to the rim. That's one of the things when you're playing against a zone defense, when you're playing especially something like a box and one, a triangle and two, not only settling for outside shots if you're one of the guys not being denied and heavily guarded. Troy D'Amico doing well for his team, getting himself a trip to the charity strike. And a 76% free throw shooting team are the Salukis. The Bulldogs, 74%, but just 68% in the Valley. So if free throws become a factor, that might favor Southern Illinois tonight. D'Amico drops down a pair and gets the Salukis their first five points. So big opportunity and responsibility for Kyron Gibson tonight to run the point. He takes it in deep, has it knocked away by Rupert. Southern Illinois breaking, and from the corner, the three ball won't go down by Trent Brown. Uh, part of this Saluki offense, willing to run clock in the half court, but also like to get out and run, look for those open threes. Trent Brown, probably the best shooter on this ball club. Lob inside to Darnell Brody. He can't finish. Part of the reason is he got shoved out of the way, and Southern Illinois guilty of the foul, and that will be two against A.J. Ferguson. Yeah, that's big. A.J. Ferguson, we mentioned coming off 16 and 10, has been really good for the Salukis and just adds a dimension with his ability to slash off-ball cuts, a big strength for number 14. But to your point, Larry, you're going to have to head to the bench here early in this first half with two fouls. Brody, third all-time in great career rebounding, knocks down the free throw, comes in averaging 11.8 per ball game, leads the conference in rebounding, and you take a look at A.J. Ferguson getting counsel from Brian Mullins. He picks up that second foul, barely two minutes into the game. Brody, one of two on the line, and D'Amico with the rebound. Kennard Davis, a freshman from St. Louis, has come into the lineup to replace Ferguson. Brown trying to get around at and right, loses the basketball to right, but it was last touch by Wright, according to the officials. I don't know that Darren DeVries agreed with that call. Now we'll take a look at it here. Let's see if as Trent Brown's turning the corner, 
Hands in for Atten right. Oh, looks like Kyron Gibson. Yeah, it looked like that might have been off Trent Brown's knee. So a fortunate break for the Salukis. Johnson puts on the brakes, finds Ken Trent Brown, and Trent Brown in and out with the three ball. And coming up with the rebound, Tucker DeVries. Sprained an ankle early against Indiana State. Looked like he might not be able to return, but he was only absent about five minutes. He came back in. Johnson, who again, outstanding defensively, yep. flags down the pass. And you see the active hands for Southern Illinois on the defensive side. And Rupert, the St. Peter's transfer, just gets caught moving a little too fast with a walk on the perimeter. Good look at Brian Mullins. He played for Southern Illinois, was, is in their Hall of Fame, was on the squad from 2006 to 2009. Played in two NCAA tournaments and one NIT tournament. And still holds the career assist record at SIU. And was just horrible to play against, Larry. It was, it was <laughs> absolutely about that. <laughs> horrible to play against. A couple-time defensive player of the year. First-team all-league guy is some pretty high accolades for a coach on the bench. High accolades for number 12 in white, Tucker DeVries. Showing off his determination getting all to the rim you ha all the way to the rim You have to respect his ability to shoot the basketball guard him tight Don't get it twisted Tucker can get by you as well That ties the score at five Johnson takes the handoff from Rupert and scores and Xavier Johnson hits 45 percent of his shots from the floor has hit 54 threes this year Gets to the free throw line more than anybody in the country and hits 90% of those. Yeah, and, and that's really what he does best. I mean, Xavier Johnson is so physical with the basketball. DeVries tries to light it up from three, and it's another rebound for Rupert. And Clarence Rupert has a couple of early rebounds for Southern Illinois. Rupert, as you mentioned, a physical president, 6'8", 239 out of Philadelphia. By way of, as you said, St. Peter's University. Johnson trying to break down Gibson. D'Amico back to Johnson, looks at a three, drives in, kicks it off. The shot by Rupert is short, and the rebound is grabbed by Gibson. Now time, a good job swarming for this Drake defense. Once Xavier Johnson gets in the lane, he's the leading assist guy in the Missouri Valley. What he does so well is draw contact and get to the free throw line. Good job by Drake keeping their hands high to close down that lock drive. Gibson tries to feed to DeVries and Johnson pokes it out of bounds. The Bulldogs will have 10 seconds to shoot it. When play resumes, they'll also make their first substitution. Carlos Rosario will come into the lineup. 15-08. You know, both these teams have aspirations Going to St. Louis, see themselves hanging a banner, getting to the NCAA tournament, trying to play their best basketball as we approach mid-February. Carlos Rosario comes onto the floor for the Bulldogs along with Nate Ferguson. Hatton Wright finds himself in the middle, double team, puts the shot up, it bounces off and into the rebound. Scotty Abube, who is from Mundelein, Illinois, and played with Connor Enright on a team that won a conference championship for the first time in many, many years when they played together. And Abube, a guy that can come in and make a big difference with his ability to block shots and rebound. Very active when he gets in the game. Davis misses the three. Johnson does a good job trying to save it, but can't. And the Bulldogs will get the basketball. Southern Illinois picked to finish ninth in the preseason poll in the Missouri Valley Conference. Right now, they're in fourth place and really bidding for one of the top three spots. Yeah, and have had a winning record in conference basically the whole year as, as the games have started stacking up and sitting at seven and six today, but have had a tough schedule, a tough slate the last few weeks as Tucker DeVries again showing off his ability to be a three-level scorer, not just a guy that's going to step out and shoot threes, has gotten much better this season putting the ball off the bounce, scoring on the inside, but also facilitating. Nice look inside to Abube, and Scotty Abube is into the book. He comes in averaging six points a ball game. Sophomore redshirt, as we mentioned, from Mundelein, Illinois. Nate Ferguson doing a good job off the bench of late. Ducks into the lane, pitches it back out. Down the lane comes Overton. This is the shot. The offensive rebound grabbed by Rosario, and he scores. That 
Larry, the thing that Carlos Rosario does best for this team is his off-ball cuts. And sometimes, for especially for all the young players out there, right, you cut to the rim, you expect to get the ball. Well, not Carlos Rosario's cutting because it's the right thing to do. Sometimes when you do the right things, you get rewarded by being in the right place at the right time. That time is Kevin Overton unable to finish. Carlos Rosario, strong two-hand rebound and one finish. The transfer from Washington State tries to give Drake their first lead of the night. And does. He completes the three-point play, and Drake leads at 10-9. And important for Coach Darren DeVries, both Carlos Rosario and Kyron Gibson, ability to stay on the floor with this shortened bench. Now, Rosario suddenly has to take a big role yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a guy that's been playing six, eight, ten minutes. Might have to be upwards of 20. Steal, Tucker DeVries. Brown will try to cut him off, so DeVries feeds instead. And a foul call. Kevin Overton will go to the foul line as Tucker DeVries gets the steal, and he leads the ball club in many categories, steals included. Yeah, great, just great anticipation using those long arms at six foot seven to get in the passing lane, and good job leading the break. That's where Kevin Overton, you know, Larry, we highlighted him in the open where he's been at his best, scoring in transition, getting downhill, getting to the rim. See the athleticism there as he draws the foul. Jared Hensley, a transfer from Cincinnati, who started his career at UNC Greensboro, comes on for Southern Illinois. Overton, who's a 77% free throw shooter, knocks them both down. Overton earning that Freshman of the Week award for his 13.5 rebound performance at Indiana State. Previous a 12 rebounds, a 12.4 rebound performance against Valparaiso. Drake enjoys their biggest lead. And this is where you're going to see the ball a lot, ending up in Xavier Johnson's hands to play make. Three won't go by Hensley. The ball out of bounds, and it belongs to Drake. And Scotty Abube is in the game. The offensive rebounding changes for this SIU team. Twice now, he's almost had his hand on the basketball, both times unable to corral it. And from a physical standpoint, he's really only, the only Saluki who, at least physically, can match up with Darnell Brody. Yeah, Clarence Rupert not quite as tall, strong on the on the in interior, but Abube, just a bigger body. The tip of is there by Rosario. Rosario so, really hadn't done a lot for the Bulldogs, and then yeah. it was a game against Valparaiso. They really needed him. He had an eight-point explosion. Well, and sometimes that's what you need, right? As a coach, you need guys that are going to step up, especially when you get into these dog days of February. The league season gets a little long. You need that pop from your bench. Great with their biggest lead. Davis with the miss from the corner, and the rebound scooped up by Overton, the freshman from Oklahoma City. Overton for three. As you mentioned, he struggled a bit from the field of late. Johnson at the other end. He can't finish with a three. DeVries had his fingertips on the rebound, couldn't corral it, and it comes to a Abube. The baseline drive won't go by Hensley. The follow shot knocked down by D'Amico. And he will have a chance. The officials will now indicate that there's going to be a timeout on the court. Here's in case people don't realize that. And they don't want to call fouls. They want to explain what you're doing so they don't have to call them. Would you say that's a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think I think what part of what you notice, if you ever get a chance to sit courtside for a college basketball game, an NBA game, pay attention not only to one, how stinking big and fast yeah, these guys are, true. right? But pay attention to the level of communication amongst the team and the officials. Something that's easy not to see on TV, but really interesting to see the constant communication on the floor. DeVries against Hensley. He pumps, he fires, he scores, and he is fouled. And this brings Brian Mullins off the bench and yelling right now at Irvin Wilson. He did not like that foul call at all. Uh, and Irvin Wilson now getting an opportunity to chat with uh, Coach Brian Mullins. But I, I think it's a good call. And the reason is I think Hensley, Hensley watches Tucker DeVries picks up his dribble. That movement forward into Tucker DeVries. So they have that cylinder rule, right, where you can keep and maintain your space. If the offense takes the defensive space, offensive foul, that time I think Hensley tried to move into Tucker DeVries as DeVries went up for that shot. That's why the defensive foul. It's Rupert at the high post. Xavier Johnson being contained pretty well by the Bulldogs early. Just 
two points thus far. He goes into the lane, tries to find Rupert. Here's the drive by Hensley. The shot clock down to two, down to one. Counts if it goes, and it hits the iron, does not go down, and the Bulldogs want to quickly bring it up the court. And that's it. Ferguson back in the basketball game who just took that shot. So back in the game with two fouls, A.J. Ferguson. He had those two fouls with less than two and a half minutes gone in the contest. Brody sees an opening, takes it, and scores. Last time out against Southern Illinois, Brody had 12 rebounds. He has always rebounded well against Southern Illinois. And how about the big fella facilitating from the middle, but no defense from Rupert playing off, working against those back cuts, right? Not allowing Darnell Brody any easy passes. And Darnell Brody taking advantage, taking that big body inside with the right-hand finish. Check this out. Over the last four games, Brody has averaged 12 and a half rebounds a wow. game against Southern. D'Amico for three. The rebound by Rupert. Trent Brown gives it a thought. D'Amico going into the lane. The drive by Ferguson. Good defense by Brody. Ferguson gets it back, wants to try it again. Instead, the shot by Brown is short. He's off and he's shooting thus far tonight. And Hatton Wright quickly up to the four for the Bulldogs. Takes the coast to coast to score. Bulldogs race to their biggest lead, up by eight. Yeah, pretty good looks on the offensive end for Southern Illinois. An unfortunate long rebounds can lead to transition offense. That's where this great team is at their best. D'Amico tries to fake pass to Breeze. Johnson now leaves it for D'Amico. He is open for three. And the rebound taken by Brody. Southern Illinois struggling with their three-point shooting. They've taken 11 of them and hit just one. Bulldogs try to stretch their eight-point lead. DeVries for three. Rupert once again clears the rebound for SIU. Rupert will attack, goes coast to coast mm. against Darnell Brody and scores. How about that pretty footwork from Clarence Rupert pushing, as you mentioned, Larry, from one end to the other. Both bigs putting on a show with their ball handling and finishing. Rupert 6'8", 239, but he moved down the floor very well. Right against Brown. Tries to find Brody. Brown knocks it away, and it's picked up by Rupert. Lead feed Johnson, and Xavier Johnson scores, and he gets fouled. And a heck of a finish for Xavier Johnson and this Saluki team. You mentioned the struggles from three, Larry. Last couple possessions, getting all the way downhill, getting in the paint. How? In transition. First it was Clarence Rupert isolating one-on-one, -on -one and... Xavier Johnson doing what he's done best all year. Not only get all the way downhill to the rim, but draw on the contact and one opportunity where number 10 in red has been almost automatic. Xavier Johnson from Germantown, Maryland, played three years at George Mason. Last year, as we mentioned, the top returning score for Southern Illinois, seven a ball game, and this year, second in the country at 23.8, and the man rarely misses a free throw. And part of what makes this Saluki defense so relentless is they pick you up full court. And it's not always uh, right in you ball pressure. It's not always physical ball pressure. But you play against this team, and you cannot relax for a second as a ball handler. So the Bulldogs' one-time eight-point lead reduced to three. Overton on the attack and draws a foul against Kennard Davis. Kennard Davis with his second foul. So Southern Illinois running into some foul difficulties while the Bulldogs have only been called for three. And part of what you have to do is make sure you're attacking closeouts. And it looked like Kennard Davis was pretty vertical there as he took off. I think that's pretty good defense from number 30. But the officials thought there was a little bit of contact. So we talked about the cylinder violation earlier, right? The verticality as a defender, you're allowed to stay in your position and go straight up. Looks like Kennard Davis, pretty good verticality principles. Slapped away by Johnson, and then Johnson tries to take it away from DeVries, and he picks up the foul. And that time Xavier Johnson got the deflection, unfortunate. That time as he's trying to chase down the basketball, got Tucker DeVries on the wrist, was frustrated, but not with the call, was frustrated with himself not getting that basketball. That now the 17 foul, though, sending Tucker DeVries to the line for one and one So eight minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half. The Bulldogs in the bonus the rest of the way. 
And again, struggling in Missouri Valley Conference play from the foul line. Overall, a good free throw shooting team, but just 12 out of 23 in their loss at Indiana State on Saturday. Yeah, and free throws really hurt this group down the stretch. As those games get close, the margins get slim. Really need those extra points from the charity strike. He debris who is a 79% free throw shooter, knocks both of those down. And he will get a rest as the Bulldogs stretch the lead to five. And Eric Northweather, the 6'10 junior from Jeff City, Missouri, comes on. Tucker DeVries got some blood on his uniform, and so trainer Andrew Vereen will patch him up. And he will return shortly. Now, one of the things the Saluki offense, Xavier Johnson, isn't always super aggressive in the first half. Tries to facilitate as the game moves along. Look for him to continue to get downhill more and more. Darren DeVries wanted a charge against Rupert, didn't get it. Rupert misses the shot, comes back with the rebound, takes it up again. Darnell Brody gets a piece of it, and the Bulldogs come the other way, leading by five. Well, how about the body contact principle of verticality there? Darnell Brody, I think Ferguson got away with a walk. Hatton Wright takes it in deep and has the ball deflected out of bounds by Ferguson. And that brings us to a break with 7.28 left to play in the opening half. The Bulldogs have led by as many as eight. Southern really embody that in their coaching style. We've seen active hands on both ends and really tough defense to get through. And threes have really been hard to come by. Southern Illinois 1 of 12, the Bulldogs 0 of 4. And in fact, Southern Illinois 17th in the country in three-point defense. Here's DeVries into the lane to score. And Tucker DeVries has really taken over the offense for the Bulldogs as he has eight of their first 24. And that's where we've seen him have success early on, getting into that mid-range off the bounce. Not sending a lot of help so far are the Salukis. Tucker DeVries able to get in that mid-range before the help comes. And I should say he has 10 of their 24, DeVries does. And Southern Illinois really struggling shooting. Offensive rebound by Abube. I said it last time he came in. You put a Bube yes. in the game. What does he do? I mean, he's just really active on the offensive boards. Missed was just really close to a couple in his first stint. This time drawing the second foul on Darnell Brody. So the big fella headed to the bench for Drake with two fouls. That becomes very significant. Again, if you joined us late, Connor Enright not playing tonight because of illness. And Kobe Garland missing another ball game because of a knee injury. DeVries has been pretty unstoppable thus far for Southern Illinois as he has 10 points. Just under seven left to play in the first half. Overton against the defense of Trent Brown. DeVries comes high to take the pass. He's got great height over Johnson, but he throws up an air ball. And so Xavier Johnson, we're talking about the just the load he carries on the offensive end. Well, what's he doing on defense? He's guarding Tucker DeVries. You mentioned giving up six or seven inches. But Xavier Johnson, one of the best on-ball defenders in the Missouri Valley. So he was always that. The fact he's yeah. added the offense he's had, too, it's just amazing. Yeah, it's one thing to add offense and score 12 a game. It's another thing to be over 23. And it's making shots like that. Yeah, that exactly. Xavier Johnson, you know, he gets downhill, right? He draws a lot of fouls. He scores at the free throw line. But that long distance shooting, the confidence, the step backs, man, it has just been a special year for number 10. And it's a 10 to 4 run right now for Southern Illinois. Ferguson sets the screen and Gibson misses on the shot and there for the rebound is Scotty Abube. Johnson moves it quickly to Amico. Open look at a three by Brown, and he can bury the three. He's done it 53 times and now 54 this year. Those are his first points, and Darren DeVries needs to use a timeout because Southern Illinois has their first lead since very early in the ballgame. Uh, Trent, Trent Brown, only six points in his last game, but was in double figures in each of his last three. Xavier Johnson, the only guy that's averaging over 10 points a game, He's in the mid-20s. I mean, it is just phenomenal, not only what he's able to do on the defensive side, first-team all-league on defensively a year ago, but just how he carries this offense, tough to defend. And again, averages six assists a ballgame. Do you know the last player in the Valley to average six assists a game? 
I have a guess. Okay, take it. As the shot knocked down by Kyron Gibson, and the Bulldogs had their first three of the night. Let's just say there's more than one person in the building tonight, Larry, that has ha averaged over six a game playing in the Missouri Valley. And are they both in uniform tonight? Only one of them is, as far as I know. Oh, and so my partner might be the other one, huh? Adam Emenecker, 2008 was the year. 6.3 assists per game. Brown for three. I hope that didn't embarrass you. If it did, that's too bad. Trent Brown knocks down his second three. And it looked like Trent Brown came down on an ankle as he made that shot. It was just headed to the bench with the ankle. Hopefully, he'll be back in the game. Good to see him walking it off. Putting no weight right now on his right ankle. He is replaced by Jarrett Hensley, the 6'8 senior from the Kansas City suburb of Merriam, Kansas. Just under five left to play in the half. In deep. Atkin Wright scores and gets fouled by D'Amico. And such a physical driver, Atten Wright. When you when you look at, at his size, right, and you look at his game, you think he's going to be a finesse guy because he's got all the finesse stuff. But look at this physicality. Playing through the arm contact, going right at the body of D'Amico. Heck of a finish there for Atten Wright. You know, he's only 6'1", and you say to yourself, well, he doesn't look like a guy who could muscle, yeah. but he can He's also a terrific free throw shooter. As I say that, he misses it, but he's an 83% free throw shooter in the top 10 in the Valley. Southern Illinois down by a point, tries to take the lead back, and they've got a chance at a three-point play. Rupert hits the shot, gets fouled by Ferguson. No, Abube, the hard roll to the rim that time, and when he comes in the game, Larry, he always makes his impression felt. We talked about it on the offensive rebounds a minute ago, the hard roll to the rim, for, especially for young bigs out there. After you set that screen, if you roll with pace to the rim, that time Abube is the beneficiary, but rolling with pace to the rim creates openings within the defense for your team. Abube is only a 41% free throw shooter, but he nails that one, completes the three-point play, and gives the Salukis a lead of two. The breeze comes high against the defense of Johnson. Now he tries to beat Johnson to the baseline. Gets Johnson into the air, but Johnson knocks it away, coming back down. Yeah, great hands by Xavier Johnson to slap that one away. D'Amico baseline feed and a finish by Abube. He averages six. He's already got seven. You take this Southern Illinois offense, and you let them play in the full court, and this Saluki team can carve you up against a softer secondary break from Drake as Kyron Gibson, a much-needed three, Knocking that one down, his second bucket for Drake. First bucket, excuse me, for Drake. Bulldogs had missed their first four three-point three tries, but Gibson's hit a pair of them. The Bulldogs backed within one. Down the lane comes Xavier Johnson. He gets Ferguson into the air and scores. So on the scouting report, Nate Ferguson knows, I can't foul Xavier Johnson. Keeps his hands up and back. Xavier Johnson, not just a guy that draws fouls, though. He can finish. Ferguson nearly a steal. Down the lane comes Tough. Wright to score. I mean, that's just crafty offense from Atten Wright playing the leverage of his defenders, finding a way to get it off the window. This is the kind of game we expected, I think. High scoring, very close, back and forth. Just, just what you expect. I didn't expect the high scoring part, but oh, it's you been didn't. a fun first half. Well, they both like to push down. Ten points and a couple assists for Xavier Johnson. Here's something else about amazing about Johnson. We talked about his great improvement. Was not able to play yeah. in the summer or yeah. the fall because right. of an injury. Right. And and so I, I think that's, you know, a testament to the work Xavier Johnson's put in in prior years as well. And the confidence that he's had moving into this year. Good to see him healthy. Clarence Rupert attacks Ferguson and scores. Rupert with his sixth point, and now the Salukis are getting into the paint successfully. And a good set drawn up by Brian Mullins out of that timeout, using Xavier Johnson a bit as a decoy, getting Clarence Rupert downhill. Kyron Gibson getting a start tonight with the illness to Connor Enright. Misses on the shot. Rebound is cleared by Jarrett Hensley. Johnson gets the screen, takes advantage of it, and misfires on the three, and Nate Ferguson runs down the rebound. Ferguson, six points, four rebounds, and a block, and a steal against Indiana State, doing a nice job off the bench in recent weeks. And Drake will go to the foul line. 
do get out and transition. Talked about that for the Salukis on one end. Now at and right going against a non-set defense. As the defense is scrambled, it opens up driving lane opportunities, and Atten Wright's been physical getting to the rim so far in this one. Wright with his ninth point. Season high 25 early this season against South with Minnesota. Here's Carlos Rosario, who, when he was in the ball game before, really contributed yeah. a lot to Drake. Yeah, a good cuts. Ended up with four points in that initial stretch. Carlos Rosario doing a good job with his off ball movement. Helping his team. Had three rebounds as well. So now DeVries and Wright, both of ten apiece for the Bulldogs. The Southern Illinois comes up the court. In a one-point ball game. Johnson down the lane. Rupert somehow comes up with the basketball and double dribbles it. And the Bulldogs will get it as Southern Illinois has turned it over for just the third time. Both teams just three yeah, turnovers. Yeah, it's been for as good as the defense has been both ways, Larry. A pretty well a, taking care of the ball. Both teams taking care of the ball well on the offensive side. Already six lead changes. The Bulldogs hope to make it seven on this exchange. DeVries against the smaller Brown is going to be called for an offensive foul. And great defense by Trent Brown. We mentioned Xavier Johnson giving up some size. Trent Brown giving up some size as well, but doing a great job walling up. Does such a good job keeping his chest in front of ball handlers. And then Tucker DeVries, watch this. Easy call by the official. Nice little shove with that left chicken wing. <laughs> Trent Brown happy to go the other way with that call. First foul called against DeVries. Sixth call against the Bulldogs in the half. Xavier Johnson starts right, goes left. Brown looks for three, and he stepped out of bounds. Or he was standing out of bounds, I think, when he caught the pass. Yeah, it looked like his heel was just on the sideline there. And that's one of the things, you know, Larry, you were talking earlier about the officials in communicating. One of the things that when you sit close to the floor that's so hard to see is these little things. So you're standing on the sideline, you're watching feet, you're watching hands. Underrated how difficult it can be for officials to catch all those little micro movements. Definitely. Like someday when you watch a game and you don't care who wins, watch the officials once in a while. How they go side to side, how they get in position. It's pretty interesting. Always, especially three officials always working that triangle, and it looked like there might have been some contact there. At and right, watch this. A little bit of a ball fake. I think a pretty good no call by the official. Yes, Rupert comes in a little bit late. Doesn't affect the shot. At and right. Looked like he was trying to draw a foul more than he was trying to finish the play. Final minute first half. D'Amico pitches it out to Johnson, who has great range. Not this time. DeBreeze pulls down the rebound. Drake will try to score quickly here and get a two for one. Here's the attack by Overton over Johnson. No good. Rupert again with a rebound. He's done a terrific job on the boards. He already has pulled down six rebounds in the first half. And you see the strength of Xavier Johnson taking the contact from Kevin Overton. Doesn't move an inch. Kevin Overton had a hard time rising up over a much smaller defender. That's just stout defense from Xavier Johnson. Six second differential between the shot clock and the end of the first half. Overton chasing Johnson. Johnson trying to spin in. Loses the basketball. Taken away from him by Wright. Rosario tries to finish and gets fouled by Troy D'Amico. D'Amico with his second foul. Kevin Overton had good defense from Xavier Johnson on one side. Gives it right back to him on the other end. Look at that good footwork as Johnson loses his footing. And then in transition again, Carlos Rosario. Five points so far in this first half. Good minutes thrust into duty. With a couple injuries on that Drake bench. Rosario, a couple of years at Washington State. First year was injured, really sat out. So he comes to Drake as a redshirt sophomore, and he hits the free throw to give him six points. And the Bulldogs are going to send Andrew Alea into the lineup. He is a redshirt freshman from Kenosha, Wisconsin, often used just in late-game situations when the verdict has been decided. But tonight with the shortened bench, he's going to get a couple of seconds right here. As Rosario, a 63% free throw shooter, is 3 of 3 from the line and gives the Bulldogs the lead with 4 seconds to play. Johnson wants the ball in his hands for the final shot. It's short. Rosario grabs the rebound to Drake. 
undermanned as they are, will take a one-point lead in the locker room at halftime. Physical first half, but both of these teams getting out in transition. You mentioned it earlier, Larry. I'll kind of Ben at the bottom of the league. You see the standings. UIC just one and eleven, but. Listen, 8 and 15 overall. So you do the math, you look at the non conference, the bottom of the league just better overall this year, which means as we get into these games in February, going on the road, especially treacherous for any anywhere you are in the Valley Standards. And it's interesting to me, the road teams have won 44% yes. of the game. That's a really high number really for road high. wins. Yeah, we're used to 70% plus winning percentage in this league. Johnson with a miss, and Kyron Gibson getting the starting call tonight with. Connor Enright out, takes the rebound. Bulldogs' biggest lead has been eight. Saluki's biggest lead has been four. And in terms of who had the lead for the most minutes, just a one-minute differential. That shows you how close it's been. Great beat, Darnell Brody to Kevin Overton. Darnell Brody so improved as a passer. See the, sees the floor really well. And Coach Darren DeVries helps run his offense, sometimes through Darnell Brody and his ability to facilitate. The Amico, nice job to find an open Johnson underneath. And now five assists for Troy D'Amico. And Xavier Johnson, you have to respect the fact as he's coming off that screen, get the ball on the perimeter. That time Kyron Gibson just jumping it. Brody at the high post tries to slip a pass inside for Atten Wright. This time he can't do it. And it will be Southern Illinois basketball. Kelly Self has called a momentary timeout. Darren DeBreeze didn't like the last call. Thought there might have been a double dribble. And there's the backdoor feed is Kevin Overton. A nice cut. I think what the fans and the end of the bench for Drake were looking for is thinking that ball was touched before it hit the baseline. Kelly Self just going to let him know that uh, he was he had it under control. Didn't need the help. <laughs> Probably not. Rupert hands to Brown. Brown for three. No. Brody with a rebound. The breeze again being guarded by Johnson. That shows you how good a defender Johnson is with that kind of a size mismatch that he's still the man aside to DeVries. Here's Overton slipping the pass inside to Brody. He gets Rupert into the air and scores. And Darnell Brody being able to bring some offense to this Drake team early here in the second half. So big on the inside, has good footwork. Especially when he uses his size to get good position and get all the way to the rim. Brody, those two early fouls, but he's a player that can make a difference for Drake because of the size he brings against the Southern Illinois team that doesn't have a whole lot of guys to match up against him. Ferguson has the ball poked away, but contact made by Overton, and he has his first foul. Let's get another look at what had upset. Darren DeBreeze De earlier. Yeah, so we saw this backdoor cut, and I think, yeah, does Rupert reach out and touch that basketball? We need to go super slow mo. You know, they always look. Did the did the seams of the ball rotate? Did it change? And Clarence Rupert really close to touching that thing. Certainly, the fans in the front row, the Drake faithful, thought he did. D'Amico misses the shot. DeVries makes contact, a no foul call. Right and lead feed to a driving Overton. Overton a couple of quick baskets to start the second half, and Drake extends the lead to five. Starting with the active hands defensively, Tucker DeVries deflecting that three, getting this Drake crowd in it. Emiko sets a screen, and from the corner the shot is short. Ferguson gets knocked down, and Ferguson will go to the line. And that's the second foul here in the second half on Kevin Overton. And watch this. Just great hands from Tucker DeVries. And Atten Wright, good to go get that basketball, get out in transition. Much easier to score against this Saluki defense in transition. And Kevin Overton, what he's done so well this year, going to finish at the rim. Ferguson, a junior from Houston, started his career at East Central University in Oklahoma. And he knocks down the free throw to give him his first point of the night. And as you mentioned, coming off his first career double-double, 16 points, 10 rebounds, Saturday at UIC. And one of the things A.J. Ferguson does so well off the ball is, is his cutting. So as he's cutting, knocking down the second free throw, as his teammates are driving, A.J. Ferguson gets ahead of speed and cuts really hard right into the paint, sometimes catching it on that first step. Really does a good job keeping the defense off balance, but also improved as a three-point shooter. 
fouled in the act of shooting the three, knocks down all three, makes it a two-point game. Brody comes to set the high screen. DeVries looks for Brody inside. He tried to look at a little two-man game. Instead, Brody will take it himself and knock it off the glass and down. Darno Brody, kind of a lackluster first half, got into foul problems for two quick baskets here to start the second half. Yeah, you look at his first half, three points, three rebounds, much more actively engaged and involved here in the second half, an assist and a couple buckets. Xavier Johnson one-on-one -on -one against Kyron Gibson. The pitch in the corner for A.J. Ferguson for three. Ferguson's 10th three of the year. Hasn't shot a lot of them, hadn't hit any of them, just 27%, but he brings the Salukis back to within one. And after a quiet first half with foul trouble, Ferguson making his impression as well. Six points here in the second half. Certainly in the shoot around today, obviously Johnson gets a lot of attention from Drake, but so does Ferguson. Speaking of whom, he picks up his third foul. And that big smart play for Adam Wright. Isoed at the top. As Ferguson on him and watch this takes the contact, but then that little bit of a ball fake the little ball fake little patience Gets Ferguson off balance and draws the foul At and right who's the transfer from Cal Northridge where he was a two-time honorable mention all Big West selection Miss fires on the free throw again a terrific free throw shooter 83 percent, but just two out of four so far tonight Scotty Abube comes into the lineup for Southern Illinois with Ferguson picking up his third foul and going to the bench. Right, seven points, seven rebounds against Indiana State on Saturday. Has 11 points in this ball game. Break by a pair with four minutes gone in the second half. D'Amico takes the pass and then hands them to come around to Johnson. Johnson moves to his right a lot more than he moves to his left. He puts the floater up short. There's that and right with a rebound. At and right against two Salukis. And one of them fouled him. And that was Trent Brown. Brown with his second foul. Ten out, 15-43. Couple of inches and about 25 pounds. Yeah, and, and Clarence Rupert, you saw, like, he holds up. Right, but you're not moving Darnell Brody back once he makes up his mind that he's going to get all the way to the rim. Great inbounds, right finds Brody, and Brody able to elude Abube. He went flying past him, and Brody just patiently put it in. He has six second half points and a lot of contact there from DeVries and D'Amico underneath. No call by the official, but opening up Darnell Brody on the inside. Kennard Davis, number 30, back onto the court for Southern Illinois. He'll take a three, leave it short, and the rebound taken down by Tucker DeBreeze. Carlos Rosario catches in mid-stride. Wright works against Trent Brown. Brody sets the pick. Kyron Gibson drives the lane to score. <laughs> And Larry, that's really the first time we've seen dribble penetration, ball reversal, ball reversal, into more dribble penetration for Drake. So a little more active ball movement after only having one assist in the first half. Gibson now with six points off the ball. Kelly Self has spotted a foul. And it will go against the Bulldogs. That's going to be the third on Darnell Brody. So sending him back to the bench. We've been talking a lot about his offense. As you see, that ball movement for Drake. Kyron Gibson having a good game. Eight points for him so far with a couple threes and the nice take there to the rim. So a shortened bench grows even shorter for a while with Brody to the bench with his third foul. Ferguson backs up behind the three-point line. Batted away by Gibson. And then it will be Drake basketball because a foul push off spotted against Southern Illinois. That's going to be Number AJ four. Ferguson. That's going to be his fourth, fourth foul. foul yeah. So a huge call as Brian Mullins trust in AJ Ferguson. And that's usually what happens. It's not the main plays, the offensive fouls, or, you know, playing straight up defense. It's the loose balls where those haphazard fouls come in. And that time, no doubt, a lot of contact there from A.J. Ferguson. Sending him to the bench now for an extended time with four fouls. 14-35 when he picks up foul number four. 
Here's that and right. Leaving it off for Ferguson, who scores. From close range, Nate Ferguson is almost deadly. He had 72% of those shots from in close range. And great shot creation there for Atten Wright, drawing the defense and dropping it off, giving Ferguson that opportunity. Xavier Tough. Johnson backed up by the three and got fouled as well. A chance at a three-point play as Kevin Overton commits the foul on Xavier Johnson. Well, that's going to be Kevin Overton's third foul. And watch this. I mean, there is no space. Xavier Johnson, six foot, six foot one. Kevin Overton, six five, six six. There's no space for this release. Gets it off, draws the contact. I mean, that is just tough from Xavier Johnson. Johnson, again, leads the Missouri Valley Conference is second in the country, averaging 23.5 per game. He has 14 already. He's a terrific free throw shooter, second in the country in free throws made with 170. That's the first time he's been to the line tonight. He was there 20 times against yeah. UIC on Saturday in a foul play game and hit 18 of them. Here's Wright having the ball deflected by Brown to picking it back up. Under 14 to play. Great tries to extend a four point lead as DeVries takes it to the rack. In and out. A tough shot. Ferguson with an offensive putback. Again, he doesn't score a lot, but he yeah, scores yeah. with opportunity. Well, and sometimes what you need, we talked about Carlos Rosario in the first half. Sometimes better to be in the right spot, right? That's what Nate Ferguson does. Always in the right place, looking to take advantage of his opportunities. Hensley sees an opening, takes it against Ferguson. Ferguson's there to defend. Right, battling Johnson, able to contain the basketball. And then a foul is going to be called on Trent Brown. And for Trent Brown, it's his third foul. So both teams are with some foul situation concerns. And how about the crafty ball handling? Watch this. I mean, there's like nowhere to go. You got two really good defenders on you. And Adam Wright just so strong. Draws contact. Does a great job going around defenses and drawing fouls. Nifty. Hatton Wright, who admits when he entered the transfer portal, he didn't know where Drake was. He'd heard of the rapper Drake, but not the school. And what an addition he's been for the Bulldogs. And Nate Ferguson will go to the line. And a nice set drawn up by Coach Darren DeBreeze, that under basket out of bounds. Because you know Tucker DeBreeze has so much gravity, he's going to attract so much attention. Tucker DeBreeze is the screen setter. A late switch from Southern Illinois. And Nate Ferguson has an open look on the other side. And that is Troy D'Amico's third foul. So the foul is really stacking up for the Salukis. We mentioned Drake being shorthanded. Of course, Darnell Brody with three fouls on the bench. Kevin Overton with three as well. But a number of Saluki players with three. And A.J. Ferguson with four. Ferguson with his fifth point. That would be the Bulldogs Ferguson, Nate Ferguson. And Drake assumes a seven-point lead at 56-49. to 49. Just over 13 left to play as Johnson looks to get around Overton and can't. This is Rupert attacking Ferguson. Open look for Trent Brown. It's short. Rebound grab by DeVries. And at the other end, the Bulldogs fail to communicate. The ball will go back to Southern Illinois. Becker DeVries, four rebounds tonight to go along with his 10 points. Now this Drake offense building up to now a seven-point lead. Tucker DeVries had 10 points at halftime. If he still has 10 points, Larry, that tells me he has not scored in the second half. So good job by all the other guys on this Drake group finding open looks. Johnson with a miss. DeVries flags down rebound number five. DeVries trying to get around Brown, who's got to be cautious with three fouls. Miscommunication there with Ferguson. And the ball will go back to Southern Illinois as the Bulldogs turn it over two consecutive trips. Yeah, and I thought Tucker DeVries had Nate Ferguson a little bit of a lob, the option there at the rim. And probably a little bit of fatigue that time setting in on his decision. Kevin Overton checking back in the basketball game after just a short rest. And DeVries... Among the highest minute performers in the Missouri Valley Conference, just needs a brief rest. He's number four in minutes played in the conference this season. Clarence Rupert takes the pass. Johnson cuts. Johnson fires, leaves it short. 
And the rebound out of bounds off the hand of Jarrett Hensley. Great basketball with 12.06 to go. And a pretty good look. And just an example of how hard Xavier Johnson is to guard. Kyron Gibson straining himself, running through screens, having to try to stay in front of number 10. Xavier Johnson, a good look in the mid-range, just unable to capitalize. Right against Johnson. Loses it. Nice effort that time by Johnson. So once again, he puts tremendous defensive pressure on you. D'Amico for a big three. The offensive rebound by Hensley. And he will go to the line with a foul called on Drake. Carlos Rosario with his first foul. Team fouls now, five apiece. Eight turnovers right now in the game tonight. Only five assists. So a bit different. Uh, different game plan, a little bit of a different outing, different success level for Drake in their creation off the ball. Credit to the Saluki defense, but Drake has been more active after only one assist in the first half, four so far here in the first eight minutes of the second half. Jared Henley, a double transfer from UNC Greensboro and then two years at Cincinnati. Hasn't been to the line many times this year, just 13 times, and he has hit 11 of them. Gets two there to pull the Salukis within five. Tyron Gibson, who got the starting call tonight, finds Brody. Brody with those three fouls back in at the timeout. He's got it against Clarence Rupert. Looks to back him down. And ducks under, and this is if it does draw a foul against Rupert. And Coach Brian Mullins not happy with that cause. There was a lot of contact between both guys as Darnell Brody was backing down and displacing Clarence Rupert. Watch this. I mean, this is strength on strength from these two. And understand why the official made that call. As Rupert, you have the opportunity to go vertical, but as a guy's going into his shooting motion, if your arm is out and there's contact, it's almost an automatic whistle. Do you remember when college basketball was a non-contact sport? <laughs> Has college basketball ever been a non-contact sport? I mean, the, the people that think that it is just, it is all, whether it's it's fundamentals or whether this game is not a full contact game, there is a lot of contact between these two teams. DeVries with the steal. Gibson picks it up. And he will go to the line with a foul called on Xavier Johnson, which will be his second. One, and one of the ways that Southern Illinois can set their defense is scoring on offense. I, I understand that sounds simple, but now for Drake, as they've gotten stops, long rebounds, turnovers, getting out in transition, Kyron Gibson attacking to the rim, drawing the foul on Xavier Johnson. Gibson from Alexandria, Louisiana. And he knocks down the free throw to give him nine points in the ball game. He's been to the line 16 times prior to tonight and hit 15 of them. Transfer from Texas Arlington, where he averaged double figures a season ago. He hits both free throws there. He's got 10, three Bulldogs, make it four Bulldogs now in double figures. And Drake leads it by eight, equaling and, their biggest lead of the night. And Kyron Gibson has been primarily in a reserve role, right? But how nice for Coach Darren DeVries, having two guards, point guards out, having a guy with like Kyron Gibson to put in the lineup that has all the experience as a starter throughout the course of his career, showing well here for Drake. Bulldogs, some really tough defense on this exchange. Southern Illinois running out of time, down to four. The lob is too far for Brown. It's loose, the Bulldogs force the turnover. At and right comes the other direction. Open look for Gibson, won't go. And the rebound is knocked out of bounds. And it will belong to Southern Illinois. That was a really good defensive stand by Drake. Yeah, good defensive possession. And both of these teams, back to the physicality thing. There is so much contact. Both these teams really well schooled, well coached on the defensive side, playing with their feet and their chest, not their hands. You think they play defense like their coaches did? <laughs> well, I know Brian Mullins. Listen, Darren DeVries might fancy himself as a defender, but let's see him out here. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Shot clock again down to seven as the Bulldog defense really stepping up. Xavier Johnson fires, misses with three on the shot clock. Scramble for the rebound. Clarence Rupert does a terrific job hustling to save it. Great job by Rupert to get another 20 for Southern Illinois. And the shot by D'Amico is short, but the rebound comes right back to him. Long shot by Johnson is short. 
And the rebound is run down by Overton. Uh, a couple good opportunities there from D'Amico to Johnson. Those are good looks. Coach Brian Mullins will take. Unfortunate for the Salukis, they didn't go down. Atten Wright is going to be called for an offensive foul. Trent Brown drawing the foul, and Atten Wright has his first foul. A little bit of, uh, shall we say, theatrics from Trent Brown here. Now, these two have been super physical, right? So does Atten Wright kind of come and dip that shoulder? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's the physicality we've seen from both of these two teams, but Trent Brown in the right spot, takes that in the chest. Maybe a little embellishment. But he did what he needed to get the call from the official. And here comes Xavier Johnson. His final year of college basketball. Second year at Southern Illinois after three at George Mason. And a foul called on Drake. And it's going to be whistled against Carlos Rosario. And that will be seventh foul called against the Bulldogs. The Salukis have already committed seven fouls. Free throw shooting down the stretch could be a factor. And watch this, Carlos Rosario just fighting for position and throwing out the little chicken wing. <laughs> and Carlos Rosario not happy with it. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people, when they look and see fouls, they're looking at the reaction or the second action. They don't usually see what happened first in that play. I think that's the right call by the official. D'Amico, an outstanding free throw shooter, four for four tonight and 81% on the year for the junior from Chicago. Spent three years playing behind Marcus Damas, getting his opportunity and making the most of it in his junior season. And he's perfect at the free throw line in five tries tonight. And the Salukis pull back to within six of Drake. And you just get the feeling, Larry, both these teams' tensions are kind of rising, right? I mean, there's been a lot of physicality, a lot of fouls. The crowd getting a little tense. A fun February game. Absolutely. DeVries against Johnson reaches in crowd wants a foul And then there is contact and a foul is called and it's going to go against D'Amico. Troy D'Amico with his fourth foul Yeah, and, and honestly for D'Amico that that's just it's kind of silly. Yes He got some contact on the basketball But coming very aggressively watch this so I thought Xavier Johnson got away with one But look getting the contact on the arm and players on both sides right now looking at the officials like what I do There's a lot contact both ways we might have a free throw fest here the last eight and a half minutes D'Amico and Ferguson two Southern Illinois starters four fouls apiece DeVries has his first point of the second half and D'Amico staying on the floor with those four fouls so a lot of trust from coach Brian Mullins looks like Hensley might be checking into this basketball game meanwhile Tyron Gibson comes in for Drake as Hensley comes in for Southern Illinois at and right to the bench for Drake and with those four fouls Troy D'Amico to the bench for SIU And look Troy D'Amico saying wasn't didn't know he had four fouls You saw him talking to his coaches there may have changed his mindset and aggressiveness going to that trap on Tucker DeVries Johnson mm. guarded by Gibson mm. and hits the shot nails the three some people in the crowd thought he might have done a little arm bar first. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he gave a little bit of an arm bar, but man, that is just, that is just tough from Xavier Johnson. That step back, going to his right, coming back to his left hand, almost an impossible cover. 19 points for him. Brody, the lob for DeVries, and Hensley with a foul. I think they're going to get Xavier Johnson for that. Un underneath You're as, as You're he, with him and Tucker DeVries were jockeying for position But what does this mean now again? It means Tucker DeVries going to the line So yes, does Xavier Johnson will take a look at that three does he give a little bit of an arm yet? He doesn't extend it all the way. You're allowed to absorb that contact with your arm And Kyron Gibson, I mean that's that's good defense Xavier Johnson just elite elite Offense he did create some separation. He did. Yes, he did Rupert out for Southern Illinois. And Ferguson is going to come back in with four fouls as DeVries has 14 points as he's been to the foul line seven times tonight and hit six of them. And he will now get a break with 8-12 left to play. And the Bulldogs enjoying a eight-point lead, which equals their seven-point lead, second biggest lead of the ballgame. Abube, Hensley. Ferguson on the court along with Johnson. 
Johnson trying to break down Gibson. Brown attacks. Brown has it knocked away by Rosario. He went for the block, got a foul in the process. And Carlos Rosario with his third foul. Seven for behind wind at UIC. There were 55 fouls wow. called in that ball game. And a total of 60 free throw shot. 33 by SIU and 27 by UIC. At the line is Trent Brown. And Brown able to hit the front rim and then have it drop through for his first free throw success of the night. But he's had a lot of them this year. 91% from the line for the graduate student out of Scottsdale, Arizona. But this time a rare miss by him. And the rebound run down by Rosario. Six-point Bulldog advantage is Darnell Brody on the high post. Finds Atten Wright. DeVries works in against Johnson. Rosario quickly underneath to Brody. Darnell Brody with the reverse. Terrific feed from Rosario. And how about the timely cuts again? Carlos Rosario making his impression felt, earning some extra minutes from Coach Darren DeVries. Rosario pretty much struggled in the non-conference season, but he tends to be growing up as he's relied on the conference season. Trent Brown knocks down a big three for Southern Illinois. That's such a quick trigger from Trent Brown. as a compact release, consistent. No doubter as that one left his hand. He started sprinting back knowing it felt good. DeVries this time paired off with Trent Brown. Better matchup for DeVries as he takes Brown to the baseline. And a foul called. Trent Brown with his four fouls, so now Brown's got four fouls, Ferguson's got four fouls, and D'Amico has got four fouls, all starters for Southern Illinois. Now watch this, just so, such a quick release from Trent Brown, but you mentioned it, Larry, I mean, all these guys with four fouls, and for Coach Brian Mullins, a couple of things, routing guys in between, in and out of the game, but, you know, you're going to have to have two players to create some consistency two guys on the floor with four fouls almost no matter what for the Salukis and with DeVries at the line scoring his 15 points so you look at DeVries he's 670 he's 210 you look at Johnson guarding him at 61 189 and yet he has held DeVries without a basket here in the second half and again you've said it before but worth repeating how is he getting that done what <laughs> you know, I, I think part of it, Larry. Did that, that not make sense? That <laughs> no, it did. I was trying to see what Kelly Self was saying as okay. he was talking to Darnell Brody and Rupert. But you know, I frequently say things to you that don't make any sense. So, <laughs> never, Larry, never. The question was, why is Johnson so effective with the, giving up so much side? against Tucker DeVries. You know, I, I think part of it for Xavier Johnson, and you see it right there, right? He is constantly in attack mode on the offensive side, on the defensive side. One example with the basketball in your hands going, and there's no fear from Xavier Johnson. Attacking six foot one, you attack the six foot ten shot blocker on the inside and Darnell Brody, and what he does, a fourth foul on Darnell Brody. What, what Xavier Johnson does so well defensively is he has great he has a great base he's very solid he has very quick feet and he uses his strength so that you're not going to move him and he never allows the offense he always keeps bigger guys like Tucker DeVries guessing with his body positioning because you can't move him because he's like a fire hydrant you got to shoot over him Xavier Johnson athletic enough to contest it he now has 21 points we mentioned 18 free throws made against UIC on Saturday he is number two in the country free throws made with 170 coming in a five-point Bulldog lead Ferguson replacing Brody with those four fouls Overton makes the move on D'Amico who has four fouls and is able to take advantage of that and Kevin Overton's been pretty quiet now up to eight points but a nice move as the lane opened up a lot of attention paid to Tucker DeVries so now Bulldogs shorthanded bench, Southern Nolan deep in foul problems as we go down the stretch, and Johnson is a machine, isn't it? I mean, that's just so <laughs> tough. It's so he's got that right all over him. Just that little bit of a chicken wing nudge gives Xavier Johnson all the space he needs. Ferguson at the high post, lobs for DeVries. Again, DeVries. The big height advantage over Johnson shoots over him, but it's long, and the rebound is taken by Clarence Rupert. 
SIU trying to cut a five-point lead with five and a half minutes to play in regulation. In deep to score for Southern Illinois, Clarence Rupert. And all just like that, down to one possession. Going to get a timeout here for Coach Darren DeVries. Good execution for the Saluki offense. And, of course, Xavier Johnson. This will leave DeVries with two timeouts. Ryan Mullen has three. 5.22 to play. Kevin Overton. Bulldogs onto the floor with Gibson, Overton, DeVries. Brody with four fouls is back in. And that and right, Southern Illinois countering with dabico has got four fouls. Ferguson has got four fouls. Clarence Rupert, Johnson, of course, and Kennard Davis. Here's the drive by DeVries, and he misfires. You just saw a look at the foul trouble, just pointing out what we said. Johnson kicks it off. Davis for three. He hits it. Kennard Davis with his first basket. It's a big one because it ties the ball game at 69. And that looked like a lot of contact from Xavier Johnson as Tucker DeVries was going to the rim. The Saluki's taking advantage the other end. Big three from Davis. Brody sets the screen. Wright looks inside. Brody trying to get free of Rupert. Gets the ball. Rupert falls down. Let's see what the call will be. It'll be a foul against Rupert. Yeah, it looks like calling a block. Anticipation. Not a lot of contact there as Darnell Brody is backing in. Coach Brian Mullins not happy with the call, but watch this. Leaning, leaning, and then kind of pulling the chair. But that is not a lot of contact. I think a good call from the official is Darnell Brody. Watch now Rupert's legs helping trip Darnell Brody up as he goes to the ground. Brody with his 13th point of the night. You know, Larry, there have been a lot of calls. I think a pretty good job, though, by these officials helping keep this one under control, keep it balanced. I do, too, and especially the more physical it gets, the more difficult their job gets. Yes. 14 for Brody, 71-69 Bulldogs, 4.35 to play. Drake with two timeouts, Southern Illinois with three remaining. Possession arrow favors Drake. Johnson has the ball knocked away, tries to recover it. It's picked up by Atten Wright, and he scores. Atten Wright, big defensive play for the Bulldogs. This brings the crowd to their feet, and it's a good midweek crowd here at the Knapp Center, and it brings Brian Mullins to call a timeout. He has a couple of words for the officials before he goes back to his huddle. A four-point game with 4.09 remaining. To close what was once a eight-point gap, down to four with four minutes and nine seconds remaining. And can we just talk about looking at the numbers? Xavier Johnson, 23 points, five assists, three steals. How about played every minute of this basketball game? Three fouls for him, mostly stayed out of foul trouble. It's just a heck of a floor game. And it's a blocking foul called on Tucker DeVries as Kennard Davis started his drive in DeVries. Picks up his second foul. And I think these officials making a concerted effort not to allow some of the selling points. Contact there for Kennard Davis. Tucker DeVries not all the way in front and set. Sending Davis to the line. Davis from St. Louis went to a very prominent high school program in the Sean. They won four state titles in his time at St. Louis. A moment ago, his three was his first basket tonight. He now has five as Southern Illinois doing a good job at the free throw line. They are now 18 out of 20 from the free throw line. The Bulldogs not bad either. 23 out of 29. You mentioned Johnson playing for all, every minute so far. He played 40 the other day at UIC. Here's DeVries trying to take Brown inside. Leaves it short. And a foul whistled as well. And it will send Tucker DeVries back to the foul line. Now it looks like they're going to get Clarence Rupert for hitting Tucker DeVries. You worry in that really just adds to the significance of this one. No, for sure. And, you know, we, we mentioned it in the open, Larry. Revenge, right? I mean, this was a this was a game where Drake came out and really kind of punched Southern Illinois in the mouth in Carbondale. And Southern has played better since that game, but coming in here to Des Moines putting everything on the line. This has been an absolute battle between these two groups. Southern looking to escape with the road victory. DeVries now 10 of 11 at the free throw line without a second half basket. But he has worked his way to the line and he's given the Bulldogs a lead of four. 
as we go down to three and a half minutes in regulation. Xavier Johnson pulls the trigger on another three, not this time, but an offensive rebound by Rupert. D'Amico goes in against Overton, and Kevin Overton gets called for the foul, and you're right. Right now, the officials want to make sure it doesn't get out of hand, and they are calling it close, and that's number four on Kevin Overton. He has four, and Darnell Brody has four. Yeah, we'll take a look at it here, and, and they, they've let this go a little bit so far in this basketball game. In, in most games, that contact on the perimeter, automatic whistle from the officials if you impede the progress of the offensive player on the perimeter. And D'Amico is an 81% free throw shooter who is perfect in six tries tonight. One more for the 6'7 junior from Chicago. One of the highest rated recruits Southern Illinois had. In fact, their highest rated since 2008. And he makes it a two-point ball game. Gibson for DeVries. DeVries takes Johnson inside, off balance, misses the shot. DeVries gets knocked to the floor. The ball is loose. It is picked up by Davis. Darren DeVries is absolutely livid. He can't believe there was no call on the last play. D'Amico with the miss. Offensive rebound he is knocked out of bounds. It'll be Southern Illinois ball. Boy, Darren DeVries really <laughs> reacted to that last exchange under his team's basket. Yeah, a lot of contacts as we see Tucker DeVries going in. Actually, I think a good no call that time. Xavier Johnson keeping his hands away. I think Coach DeVries thought Rupert was out of bounds as he touched that basketball. And we see a big knockdown from Trent Brown giving Southern Illinois a one-point lead here with us as we tick under three to go. Into the offensive end comes DeVries against Johnson. What a job he's done on DeVries. Yeah, he's been to the line a lot, but still a terrific job in denying Tucker DeVries some basket opportunity. A good hustle to track that down, save the possession from Kyron Gibson. Here's DeVries looking to make a move on Johnson. Uses the screen by Brody. Fall away with three on the shot clock. Won't go. Brody there to wrap it up and put it down. And Drake's back into the lead as Darnell Brody has his 16 points, 13 of them in the second half. And it'll be an and one opportunity for Darnell Brody. Great job by Darnell Brody, not setting the screen. And when Clarence Rupert stayed with Tucker DeVries, Darnell Brody didn't stay on the perimeter. He got himself all the way to the rim. Could have been open for a pass. Instead, corralling the missed shot. And one for Darnell Brody, a big bucket to give Drake a two-point lead here with two to go. And how about the big man stepping up big here in the second half for the Bulldogs? Yeah, big second half, now up to 17 points. Xavier Johnson being watched by Kyron Gibson. Johnson down the lane. Charlie challenges Brody, who's got four fouls and scores on him. It's 25 points for Xavier Johnson, which is... A little over his average, but only by Barely. a basket. And how about the strength? Xavier <laughs> Johnson going up, moving the immovable object, Darnell Brody. Tie ball game. DeVries, this time against Clint Brown. There's contact. They're going to call an offensive foul on Tucker DeVries. DeVries with his third foul. Yeah, and I, I think great defense that time by Trent Brown. That one, to me, has been the clearest one we've seen. Watch Tucker DeVries rip it through. And then right there, that shoulder contact right into Trent Brown's tre chest. Great play by Trent Brown. Now Saluki's tie basketball game. Opportunity to get back in front. 125 left in regulation. Clarence Rupert looks for the cutter, Johnson. Johnson in the lane, challenges Brody. Brody with four fouls, trying to be a little cautious, and Xavier Johnson right now is just not missing. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that, that is so tough, Larry. That is so tough. Xavier Johnson drawing contact from Tarnell Brody. And how about the mid-range finish? Just a full complement of offensive skill. Their chest moves here in the final 106. And how about a final just in? Uh, it looked like a final Evansville 73 to 70 Bradley looking at the update now maybe 73 73 So uh, tight one in Evansville and the Bulldogs and Bradley in Peoria on Saturday Great trails by two one minute exactly left in regulation DeVries goes in deep 
misses the shot, but will go to the foul line where he's been very tough tonight. And Xavier Johnson joins the Saluki group with four fouls. And this, I think, is, would be called another cylinder violation. So as Tucker DeVries going up, Xavier Johnson bringing his chest to Tucker DeVries. No contact with the hands, but a cylinder violation as Tucker DeVries goes up for that shot. He's now 11 of 12 at the free throw line. He has 19 points. He tries to tie the game. Game tie for the eighth time. DeVries with 20. Salukis have 80. Bulldogs have 80. Timeout Southern Illinois, 56.6 to play. Drake's got the possession. Every possession yes. in this game has been. Absolutely. And wanting to have his, your five starters on the floor as best you can. And now as we tick down to these ever-important closing moments. D'Amico, Johnson, Davis, Rupert on the court for Southern Illinois and Brown. Xavier Johnson gets the screen, loses the basketball, trying to scoop it up and running out of room and crossing the sideline is Atten Wright. And Brian Mullins is incensed on the sideline with all that contact. No call. The official is going to talk about it. Brian Mullins has to be careful, though, not to pick up a technical in the closing moments. Contact is Kyron Gibson trying to work through that screen. And I'd say not a comment on the officiating, just a comment on the intensity. Yes. Both coaches have been extremely <laughs> upset from time to time tonight. You know, I think it's fair to say in most games, you could say both the coaches have been upset from time to time, but especially in this one. You know, we talked about it earlier, Larry. This is, as for a great basketball game, there's a crowd that's into it. You hear the boos raining down <laughs> for right now. Both these teams playing super physical, very aggressive, shot-making, hard-nosed defense. As fun as it gets. Shot clock as you see it, 13 and winding down. Again, they clear for Xavier Johnson, and he scores again. Xavier Johnson with 29 points. Exactly what he scored on Saturday against UIC. Break down by two. Knifing through the whole defense. Heck of a play. Four-second differential. Shot clock and the end of regulation. DeVries down the lane, scoops and scores. Both coaches going to their stars, and why not? That's so pretty. Tucker DeVries, the step through, and Xavier Johnson, opportunity. The last 10 seconds to get the last lap. Bulldogs trying to send it into overtime. Southern Illinois trying to end it right here. Of course, it's Xavier Johnson taking the shot. It's short. DeVries runs it down, knocked away by Johnson, or rather by Davis, and we are headed to overtime. At the end of regulation, we are tied at 82. And there'll be another five minutes. Meanwhile, log loss would put them back in the tie for second place with Bradley. Yeah, it looks like a Drake fan is getting a uh, unceremonious escort out of this building. Not sure what happened across from us, but Kelly Self at the table uh, asking someone to kindly take their things and go home. Some people get a little overheated in these things, don't they? Kennard Davis, the freshman, finds Rupert. Darnell Brody intercepts the pass. And that time, a little contact. Xavier Johnson gets up holding his ribcage. If he did get a shot from Darnell Brody, he would be feeling it. <laughs> Kyron Gibson getting a starting call tonight and having to do a lot more minutes than he's used to. Here's Tucker DeVries taking it to the basket, scoring and getting fouled. DeVries will go to the foul line. It looks like they called that on Clarence Rupert. I didn't see the contact. That'll be his fourth foul. But yeah, they're with the hand as Tucker DeVries is going through. A bit of a tic tac ticky tack call at the end of this game based on all the contact we've seen, but now four fouls on Rupert. So that he becomes only the fifth player for Southern Illinois is at four with four fouls. Meanwhile, DeVries completes a three-point play. He becomes the fifth player for the Salukis with four fouls. Johnson being watched by Gibson. Rupert challenging Brody. Scoops and can't score, and Darnell Brody rips down the rebound. 
And good job to hold back that pass. Try was going to try to get it to Tucker DeVries. Halfway through his motion, Xavier Johnson creeped in. Darnell Burley hold on to keep the possession. Gibson shattered by Johnson. Tries to feed Brody, and there's a reach in against Rupert, and he will become the first Saluki to foul out. Five to four fouls, except for Rupert, who now has number five, and he leaves with 345 to go in overtime. Rupert with eight points tonight. He also had 11 rebounds, four of them offensive rebounds. And how about on one end, Rupert gets an opportunity, unable to finish the reverse. And now just a little bit of a silly reach in on the perimeter. So again, not a lot of contact necessarily there, but Rupert reaching around Darnell Brody, 24 feet from the rim, sends him out of the game and Darnell Brody to the free throw line. Brody eyes the free throw and hits it. Darnell Brody, for his career this year, was or coming into the year, or up to the minute, 61% from the foul line. But he's really improved that this year. And he finally misses one. But Brody, from the free throw line tonight, had hit five of seven prior to that one and one situation. So he's really worked on all aspects of his game, free throw shooting included. Here's Johnson taking it to the rack from scoring. 31 for Xavier Johnson. Break by a pair as they come up the court. 322 remains in overtime. Bulldogs 17-game home court winning streak on the line. Knocked away by Johnson, picked up by DeBreeze. He goes baseline, fires over Hensley, hits the shot, and Hensley commits the foul. Five points of the overtime period for Tucker DeVries at 27 points in the game. I mean, we're, we're just, this is a show, Larry. I mean, we're getting to experience greatness on both ends. Great shot making, play making. Tucker DeVries watch this over Hensley, over a taller defender this time, able to get that smooth release. Misfiring on the free throw, Southern Illinois down by four, exactly three left in overtime. Brown, a good three-point shooter, hands for D'Amico. D'Amico on the weave, gives it to Johnson. Johnson races in against Tyron Gibson and misses. And Darnell Brody is there for the rebound. He has got his seventh rebound, his second here in the overtime period. Yeah, that uh, Xavier Johnson comes up kind of holding that right arm as he hit the floor. Everything but the finish that time. Bulldogs trying to stretch a four-point lead. Brody with the high screen. Gibson, baseline. Fakes past Davis and gets the shot. What a shot by Tyron Gibson. Wow. Break by six, and a timeout will be used by Brian Mullins. With two minutes and eight seconds left in regulation, the Bulldogs with a 90-84 lead over Southern Illinois. Living up to their billing as the favorites for player of the year in the league. And we talk about SIU in deep foul trouble. Tucker DeVries partially responsible for that. He has drawn eight fouls wow. against him tonight. Southern Illinois down by six, just over two to play in overtime. Xavier Johnson on the floor for all minutes in this ballgame. And both these teams going small. No fives in this game. He gets around at and right to score. And it's a 33-point night for Xavier Johnson, whose career high, 38. Five times this year, including, well, make it six now, over 30 points this season. Darren DeBreeze will use the timeout. That will leave him with one. Remember, you get an extra timeout for the overtime period, so both coaches have used the timeout in overtime, and each has one remaining. And Darren, he seconds to play. You see what we have. Both teams in the double bonus, a timeout each. Possession arrow to Drake. So how many games come down in these last 90 seconds or so, Larry, where for the possession arrow matters, Drake, possession arrow in their favor. Tyron Gibson working against the defense of Ferguson who has four fouls. DeVries takes it inside against Johnson, puts it too hard off the glass. Running down the rebound is Trent Brown. 
Again, the ball in Johnson's hands. He'll try a three, leaving it way short. And the Bulldogs will get it back with a minute 18 to go. Now, first time we've seen Tucker DeVries isolated on an island against Xavier Johnson. Xavier Johnson gets a pretty good look. Length of Tucker DeVries bothering that shot. Xavier Johnson a little deeper probably than he thought. Upset with himself, not taking advantage of that opportunity to draw this one to one possession. Great by four. A minute nine left in overtime. Gibson on the dribble against Ferguson. Gibson seeing extended playing time tonight, almost 33 minutes. Is Brody in deep? Can't score. Battles for his own rebound. It's loose on the court. And we have a tie ball. You just talked about the possession arrow, Adam, uh -huh. and how significant it might be. And we, well, both of us can play Nostradamus a little bit, can't we, Larry? It was you yes. early. It was 53-3. Three, three. three tenths. So three tenths. Now, the difference in three tenths, though, as we get to close the game, is can you catch and shoot or not? So can I Nostradamus our way into something where that's going to matter here at the end? Let's find out. DeVries feels the inbound. He'll fire with two on the shot clock and misfire. And coming up with a rebound is Xavier Johnson. Southern Illinois has a score in a hurry. They're down by four. Johnson <clears throat> brings it closer. 35 points for Xavier Johnson. Yeah, that's great defense by Kyron Gibson. Just elite offense. Xavier Johnson getting that floater to go through. Eight-second differential, shot clock and game clock. Now Southern op opting to play this one out, one possession game and a timeout. Plenty of time if Drake doesn't score to get a rebound, get it up the floor. DeVries challenges Johnson, and the ball's taken away. Big steal that time by Scotty Abube. And then the ball batted out of bounds. It's Southern Illinois with the ball with 11.1 to play, down by a pair. Yeah, and Brian top. Mullins not into K-Top. Being guarded right now by Kyron Gibson. Kelly Self still at the scorer's table. Darren DeVries imploring his team on. Johnson mishandles out of the backcourt, is able to retrieve it. And they do enter it to Xavier Johnson. Johnson with five, Johnson with four, loses the basketball. Big defensive play, and it's a tie ball with 1.5 seconds to play. Big defense comes from Tyron Gibson. And that, that looks like that call was a jump ball. I'm not sure. Jump ball call here in the final seconds. They call it a jump ball. Saluki's out of the possession arrow. Again, 1.8 now on the clock in overtime. And D'Amico, good size, is the inbounder. Brody trying to deflect or at least mess up his vision. The inbound to Xavier, and they never started the clock, and I'm not sure what the call was. Five, oh, five seconds. Five second violation. Not very often have I seen a game-closing five-second call on the offense. Credit the defense for Drake doing a great job not allowing any easy inbounds. Both coaches have gotten tremendous efforts from their team. And how about Drake playing without a starter tonight and Connor Enright? And you hear you want to throw the ball in the front court, but you want to make sure you touch it. Look for Tucker DeVries, either an easy pass in the backcourt or throwing it forward to Darnell Brody. <laughs> Brian Mullins was still at the scorer's table. The officials wave them back. They hand the ball to Tucker DeVries. In the backcourt, it comes. And at the right is fouled with 0.9 seconds remaining. And two shots for at and right going to the free throw line. At and right, a really good free throw shooter on the season. At 83%. Tonight, he is three out of five. And Stulich getting ready to check in the basketball game for his three pro point prowess. First time we've seen Stulich take off that warm up. And Wright can make it academic if he hits this free throw. And here comes Jovan Stulic, the 6'6 graduate from Serbia. He played at Little Rock for four years. Big win for Wright. He makes it a two-possession ball game with less than a second to play. 
Southern Illinois, desperation inbound. They will let Johnson shoot. He almost hit it. Wouldn't have mattered because it became a two-possession game. And the Bulldogs win a thriller in overtime, 92-88. to 88. Wow. Just absolutely wow.